remember this time to record. So we're recording this. Um, right, let's, um, let's take a look at the, uh, of course, web page. I'm doing this mostly just because I like to uh, come down here and say, well, what's today? Today is April 23rd, and that means that we've got two more weeks of this, this weirdness to go. Uh, of course, it will be a final exam, but more on that later on. So, so that's pretty good. I feel good about that. Uh, things are wrapping up nicely. Um, so, um, and, and I also, let's come over here to uh, Canvas. Let's see, we're section three. All right, and so here we have the ECHO assignment, the ECHO framework, and that's going to be due May 1st, okay? There might be another little uh, kind of an in-class assignment that we do. Um, I'm quite decided yet. Coming back here, lectures, let's see. Yeah, look, we're at the bottom here. We've just got container component architectures left to go. Let's talk about uh, ECHO, okay? So ECHO is our uh, ECHO is our client server framework uh, that we are producing. Um, I might have to refresh your pages. I made a few minor edits to this uh, just before class began. Okay, uh, remember the basic idea here: the client, simple client, requests a connection to the server. The server creates some kind of a request handler. And then the client request handler have a chat. Meanwhile, more clients can connect to the server and we'll create more request handlers. So over here on the server side of things, this is just our master-slave architecture. Same sort of architecture that we had. I mean, you could even, I considered doing this, but I thought it was a bit much. Consider server like a subclass of simulation and request handler a subclass of agent. So, I mean, we could have done something like that. Maybe next year I will. Um, here, uh, for example, we see math handler. That's going to be your lab too to create this subclass of math handler. Um, what else do we uh, need to do? Um, so, so what I've done today is uh, there is server.java. Um, what I've done today is um, I've created an example. Um, like I said, you might have to refresh your page to see this. An example of how uh, one has to customize uh, the Echo, um, the Echo framework. Okay. So this is called Casino. Okay, and Casino is a game I made up. It's basically a ripoff of Blackjack or 21. Um, when a casino game begins, the dealer, uh, Casino, the dealer uh, generates a random number between 1 and 21. That's the dealer total. Player total is zero. And then the player can type in four commands to the, uh, to the simple client seeing what I'm seeing yeah, okay uh, hit stay new and help the hit command the player total is incremented by card where card is a random number between 1 and 10 if the player total exceeds 21 the player immediately loses stay means uh, that the player is done he doesn't want any more cards and then basically, if the player total is less than the dealer total, then, um, then uh, the player loses. Player total is greater than dealer total, but not over 21. Then the player wins. And if they're the same, then it's a tie. New starts a new game. And help basically just displays these help commands. Okay, um, We uh, start the server in one uh, window, one command window. And it's, it's interesting to look at this for a second. So I'm starting the Java virtual machine and I want it to load and run 
echo server, which has a main method in it. And the server, the echo server wants to know what kind of request handler am I making? And so here I'm telling it, um, make a casino handler. And then over here in the um, typical, here I'm starting a simple client in another window. And here is the interaction. I'm doing a bunch of hit commands. Okay, here's a stay command. And it looks like here I beat the casino. Okay, uh, and then I give another hit command, but this says, hey, wait a minute, the game is over. Can't get another card. Okay, so I do a new card. Here I'm doing a bunch of hits, and here I busted. I went over 21. I got too ambitious. I type in new. Do you want another card? And here I made a mistake, and I typed in yes, but it says, uh, oh, wait, we didn't recognize that command. And then I got my feelings hurt and I quit. So this is the part that you're supposed to be impressed with. And, and I forgot to, let's go back again for a moment um, to notes on reflection. Remember this, uh, this is what we talked about uh, Tuesday, reflection. So, um, and we did this example, reflection demos. Right, and, and this is just showing off reflection. And here is this one that, you know, is really uh, kind of cool. Uh, here is a, a play, I should, this should be play now, but this is a play. Now we're gonna play some kind of a note. We read a violin note, a horn note, or just like a generic note. And here we are being passed in as a string, the name of the class. This is the name of the class. So uh, horn name, violin note, whatever it is. And then we use this class dot for name to go find a dot class file with that name, load it into the virtual machine, and return an object representing the class, C. We use C to create a new instance, a new note, okay, and then we play that note. And here, for example, play reflection demos dot horn note. Okay, so so we can do a lot, and then play. You know, here's another version of play, where um, you know it just um, you know it actually gets the name the, from just the name of the method play. You know, it gets the an object representing the method and invokes it. So what I'm suggesting is our server is going to use that trick. And here's some sample code, right? Here, that should say math.mathhandler. Uh, uh, it's gonna take this name of say the math handler, okay? And it's going to, it's going to call class.pornname and that's gonna give us a class object Okay, and then I can use new instance there to create like a, a request handler. Okay, so doing it that way means that means that the the person, our customers, who are buying this from us, they don't uh, have to uh, you know they don't have to like create like any additional classes. So let's see, so lab one, you're gonna do this and we're gonna look at casino. And so that's what's happening here. When I start this up, I just give it the name of the handler class. I'm gonna create a casino handler class. Okay, and then here's the code. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to look at the actual code. Okay, so here is my version of, of this, and I'm hoping that you have something similar. Uh, here, you can see I've got a project named Echo, and in that project, I've got a package called Echo. And in the package, you see simple client server, request handler, and correspond, okay? So the story that, we're, we're pretending is true here, 
is that um, there are two companies. There's the Echo Company and the Casino Company. The Echo Company, their product is the Echo Framework. And that product is shipped as a package consisting of dot class files. You know, we might want to take all those dot class files and you know create a jar file out of them. Something like that is how it would actually be done. But but we ship a package, be a directory, uh, and in that directory it contains four dot class files. Casino, that's a company that's in the business of creating uh, different kinds of online games. Okay, and and they. Uh, all of their software is contained in a package called Casino, and they, they purchase Echo from us and then they import this in. So all of the, uh, so the math handler will be the same. We'll create a, a package called math, right? And, and inside there, you'll have like mathhandler.java. You should also, you can also use this Casino handler to test uh, the result of lab one. Okay, so here is uh, some imports that I had to make. Okay, uh, here I'm importing the Echo framework. This package is called, we're in the casino package. Here's casino handler extends request handler from the framework. Okay, and here you can see some things that look familiar like casino total and player total. This is a little Boolean flag that I use to catch the client if he's trying to, you know, ask for another card, but the game is already ended. And uh, here's my initialization routine. Player total zero, casino total is, uh, and hit me generates a random number. This is gonna be a random number between one and 21 and game over is set to fall. So that's how we start a game. Now, here's an interesting thing that's a you know, feature of this, which is that um, you know, these random number generators aren't real random number generators. You know, they just have like a complicated sequence of numbers that they generate that, you know, that defy any obvious pattern. It could be the case that, you know, if you play a game of, of of casino, right? And then you say, oh, I want to play another game of casino and get the same cards each time, right? Because we're just generating the same sequence of random numbers each time. So I wanted to have it be more realistic than this. So remember there are part of the scenario here is that there are maybe let's say a thousand clients that are simultaneously playing casino and so that means there are a thousand casino handler slaves talking to their corresponding, uh, to their corresponding clients. And so I thought it would be cool if all of these thousand casino handlers were all using a shared random number generator. Okay, so here I've got my random number generator. Notice that it's static. Okay, and it's nicely seeded with the current time. Okay, and then if you want to use it, you have to call this hit me method, right, which is going to generate, you know, uh, a random number less than this. This line here generates a random number between zero up to, but not including max. If I add one to it, it will be a random number starting at one uh, up to and including max. Okay, and then uh, I've made it static. Okay, uh, and I've also made it synchronized. So remember all these casino handlers, request handlers are, are threads. They're all independent threads. And so we wanna have uh, synchronized access to the random number generator. That's gonna be useful because later on, you're gonna find out, you know, for example, like we'll have this login feature. And if you wanna log in, uh, you know, the, handler for that uh, you know there might be a thousand people trying to log in at the same time we're all using like the same user tables you might have like a table with user password pairs in it 
right? And so that would be like a shared resource, and so your access to it needs to be synchronized. This is kind of a baby version of it. And then here is my response method. So I've inherited a response method up here from request handler. It had a response method. Remember the way that request handler works is it has a run method in it because it's runnable. And that uh, run method receives a request from the client, passes the request, to the, uh, to the response method. And then the response method returns a string which the request handler then sends back to the client. And, but unfortunately, the response method and request handler just echoes the thing back again. So it's not very interesting. And so here I have to, and it, it says this, you know, again, I'm a guy working at casino.com or whatever, and I, you know, looking through the user manual that came with Echo, and it says there, oh, you know, what you have to do is create a subclass of request handler. What is request handler? Oh, never mind that. You know, don't worry your pretty little head about that. Uh, but you have to implement a method called response. Okay, that you know, you're going to get a request from the client. How do I get that request from the client? Again, not your problem. Don't worry about it. The framework's got that covered. You know, and then you're going to return what the response is. So I'm building up a result here, which is initially the empty string, and then at the end, I'm going to return the result. Okay, and now I'm just going to have a huge multi-way conditional. Well, if you give me the new command, uh, I call init, start a new game, and the result is, do you want a card? Okay, if, uh, if it's help, I'm gonna return this string. It just lists out what the commands are. Here I check the game over flag. If the game is over, then, uh, then this is the result you get. Okay, uh, so I put game over here because, uh, because even though the game is over, it's still legitimate for the user to call new or help but not hit or stay. Here is hit, it's hit. I'm going to generate a random number uh, less than or equal to 10 and add it to the player total. If the player total is 21, he loses and game over is set to true. Otherwise, I just tell him what the player total is and ask if he wants another card. And if it's stay, okay, well here, if the player total is less than the casino total, he loses. If it's greater than he wins, otherwise they tie. And in both of these cases, because you said stay, game over is true. And that's it. Now, you know, again, going back to our little, um, our little narrative here, our little storyline. You might be sitting at home right now, looking at all of this code going, oh gosh, you know, that looks really complicated. And, and yes, uh, formulating a response to a request, you know, could be fairly complicated. But in my version of this story, the guy who works at uh, Casino.com is an expert in casino games, and particularly is an expert in this game. Okay, so for him, this code is would be no big deal. Right? Nobody knows more than him, like how you know the game of casino goes. Okay, what this guy doesn't know about is he doesn't know about client-server architectures. He doesn't know about sockets. You know, he doesn't know any of that stuff. Okay, so uh, so that is um, so so it's a nice division of labor. Your job as San Jose State graduates, computer science graduates. You know, your job is to know about the how to put together a decent architecture, what the technology is involved is, you know, also that some guy who doesn't know about that but knows, you know, about something else can build something on top of it and just be focused on what that guy is an expert in, which in this case is like how to play this silly game, okay? 
Uh, he should not have to be making any kind of architectural decisions or having to understand anything about sockets or client servers or peers or any of the stuff that you guys know about. Even if it is, all right, so let's go to reality. So the, the author of this code is also the author of the, of the framework, all right, the ECHO framework, me. Uh, in this case, but when I write this code, I very strictly think about myself as wearing a different hat, right? And if I'm writing the code, I come across something where I'm having to understand more than I should have to understand about the framework, even though I do understand the framework, that's almost a red flag for me. And it should be for you as well. Anyway, that's it. Okay, you do the instructions in the manual, the echo manual are create a class that extends request handler. And in that class, you have to implement a response method. And there might be some other stuff that you need, you know, like these fields and, you know, the, you know, the random number generator and so forth. And that could even have been put in a utility package in the framework if we thought enough people needed that, just like we did the MVC framework. Okay, so that's actually the easy part. Now comes the hard part, okay, which is exporting this code. So, I mean, it took me you know, half an hour to write this code, but it took me like another 45 minutes to correctly export it. It's confusing. So I'm gonna click on Echo, right mouse click on the Echo project, and I come down here to export. Where do you want to export it to? Well, file system. And now I've been working in here in my own directory, C colon Pierce. Um, so um, I navigated there from the last course. So we'll just stay there for right now. Um, now here, it's about to export the entire ECHO project, settings, binaries, and source. Well, I don't need the source and I don't need the binaries. Uh, I'm sorry, the settings, just the binaries. So now I'm going to finish. Some warning about overriding this. Uh, so this, you know, the way that the way that these IDEs work, the way that, you know, IntelliJ and Eclipse work is that they have a background thread that's always compiling your code. Before I do that, so I don't have to have a separate thing where I say, okay, compile the code, you know, generate dot class files. It's doing that for me automatically, but I do make sure that all of my dot Java files are saved. And I give it a few beats just to make sure that it has time to generate all of the dot class files. Okay. So now I've got like a command window. Okay, and um, I'm going to change the directory to Here, hopefully you know enough basic DOS to or, or Unix if you're on uh, Mac. And it's a little confusing to me. It looks like bin right here is what it is the directory that it wrote. It's kind of weird. Okay, so we'll, I was expecting echo. been the last class of time is it now it's 12 30. so you see this is all right so this is good you're getting to see me suffer a little bit here uh, so i'm just concerned because you know, i'm noticing that these 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 directories well maybe it was just the directory let's look inside of echo um ah all right 
So it is confusing. So it, it apparently the bin uh, directory was there from the last class. But inside we see correspondent.class. These are all of the echo.class files. And their date stamp is today at 1225. So that would be the uh, that would be the export that I just did. Similarly, here's casino handler dot class. Uh, and that looks like, so you do have to like check all of these things. Now, it's been a while since I've been doing much, doing, I've had to worry about Java. Um, uh, I think, you know, if you just do like a normal Java installation, um, that it sets up your path variable on your class path variable, or maybe they don't even use class path any, anymore. I'm not completely sure, but but uh, but the rule used to be probably still is. I'm going to type in Java here. Uh, that when you type in uh, the name of a dot class file, it will search all of the directories on your class path. But it'll also search all subdirectories of the current directory. So I've had the CD to the bin directory. I'm just above. Let's do a DIR again. So what you're looking at there are the echo package and the casino package. Okay, so uh, so here I'm just above those packages. So there's our server, uh, his host. This is the uh, this is the IP address for local hosts running on this machine, and he's listening at port five 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 five. Oh, you know what? I didn't do that right. Quit out of that again. So the problem there was that he was running the request handler. So I want him, instead of running the request handler, which is the default, the one that just echoes, and what I want him to run is the casino handler. Don't forget to use um, the Qualified, fully qualified names of these classes or package dot class. Okay, so the casino handler in the casino package. Okay, now remember these are just strings going into main. So now he's listening, and this particular server here, uh, he is, he's the server that's going to you know play casino with people. So now I'm going to create a new window. And I'm going to in this window, uh, I'm going to start echo dot simple server. Not simple server, simple client. And there I get my little prompt and, and uh, the little prompt here. And now I could type in, for example, hip. Okay, I got a six. I got a seven. I got a one, which is increased to seven. Another stupid ace. Okay, uh, there must have been like an eight. So now I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Um, you know, 16 is pretty high. Let's stay. Let's be conservative and stay. Oh, and look, uh, I had 16. A casino only had nine, so I won. Okay, so let's try to do hit again. And oh, the game is over. So I have to start a new game by typing in new. Bring out the small cards. I'm feeling a little bit braver. 
oh, darn it. So I was at 14, I must have gotten a 10, a jack or a queen or something like that. And so now my uh, total is 24. So stupid thing, right? So we'll wait. We're not, you have to type in new or quit. Okay. So, uh, so I'm angry because I just lost a bunch of money on that. So I'm going to quit out of that thing. Okay. Meanwhile, you know, here uh, the server is still running. That, that, that agent I was talking to is is shut down. That request handler is shut down, but the server is still running. If you wanted to stop the server, I would do something like Control C is the only thing I know to do. There's probably some better way to do it, but Control C uh, will shut down whatever is running in that in that window. Okay. Um, a comment here. Um, I made a change to my request handler. This is my request handler code. And here, uh, uh, remember, um, your response can throw an exception. Something horrible goes wrong. I catch the exception here. And what I was doing is I was sending the message back to the client and calling break, which would end the, uh, which ends the uh, program. Okay. I decided that that was a little too draconian. So I've modified this and you may do the same. Uh, here, uh, I'm going to send the message, the exception message back to the client. Okay, and then if the debug flag is set to true, then I'm gonna end the session and break. But otherwise, if we're not debugging, I don't end the session just because, you know, because you know, the user made, the client made some mistake. So that's, you know, just makes things a little bit nicer maybe. Okay. That's what we got. Um, okay, so Lynn wants to see how to do that export again. Um, so let's do this. Um, let's see. How about, I'm just thinking maybe we should make some little change here. Um, um, I'll change this. Um, I'll just change this to a colon. I don't like, this could be result instead of received. Just making some little change so we can see that you know something actually happened. Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, here's my echo project. And the echo project has uh, casino and echo packages inside of it. Okay, all of these files, well, all of the files have been saved, and I've been talking for a while now, so I assume all of the dot class files have been generated. So I right mouse click on echo, and I go to export. Uh, here I choose file system. Okay, where do I want to export it to? And so you could use this browse to find a directory to export it to. And then over here, I'm going to expand this. And right now what it's set to do is export settings, binaries, and source inside of Echo. But I don't want settings, I don't want source, I just want the binaries. And then I click finish. It's gonna say, oh, well, there's um, a bunch of stuff. Oh, I see it has dot class file. That's interesting. Let's see what else it's asking me. Dot project. 
I'm just interested to see like all of the stuff it's asking me to overwrite. All right. And so then we would go to Um, let's see, this is, so we go to one window, we go to the binary uh, directory. Uh, well, here, C peer spin is where I, I, where all of that stuff landed. Okay, and inside here we have casino and echo. And if I do a DIR of echo, Okay, we see we have all these dot class files, and I'm making sure there's a lot can a lot of confusion can happen here. Make sure that these are all like a recent update. Let's see, 37, so it's like two or three minutes ago. So that looks like it's about right. And I am I am in the directory just above where these two packages are. So in that directory. I'm going to do Java. I want to run this echo server and I want it to use a uh, casino dot casino handler as the type of slaves that it's uh, going to create. So this server, when you connect to it, when a client requests connects to it, it's going to create a casino handler slave to service the client. Right. I have the debug flag on, so it prints all of that stuff out. And then like a new share over here. Uh, I am in the same directory. And here, I'm just going to start up the simple client. The client side never changes. Right. And so here I can say hit. And now it says result instead of received here. Okay, any questions about that? All right, yeah, now, um, so that's lab one is to get, lab one is to get the echo finished. And then you could, um, you could just, you could just import my casino package in there and use that to use that for testing. Okay. Um, next, let's see. Right. So all of that is lab one. Oops. Here. Next comes lab two, which is the math handler. Okay, so math handler is going to live in a package called math in the project. Again, keeping up our little storyline here. Uh, this is a different company. This is math.com. And they uh, produce these, these online you know, math calculators, let's say. And here are the commands that the math handler uh, knows how to deal with. Commands have this format, an operator followed by two or more numbers. Here are the different possible operators. And the number here can be just any number, including like a floating point number. Here I'm going to start the server up, okay? And, and all I have to do is just, thanks to reflection, a little reflection trick, I just give it the name of the handler class. Okay, here I start up the simple client, and then here you see like, me adding and multiplying numbers together. And what you don't see here are uh, things like um, error handling. So I do want error handling and type checking. For example, if instead of two, three, four, I put in X, Y, Z, Right, uh, I would expect to get a message back saying, uh, oh, you know, I'm very sorry, but you know, we were expecting to see numbers here, not X, Y, Z. 
Or if I did something like, instead of mole, I wrote in times two, three, four, I would expect the response to be, oh, you know, I'm sorry, uh, we don't recognize the operator times. Help should print out something like, you know, something like this, right? Okay, I see what you, what it is I'm supposed to do, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, and again, um, uh, I'll just warn you in case you weren't quite following that is that the, the version of the request handler that I gave you, if the response method, so that's what you're going to do here, right? You're going to create math handler extends request handler, and then you'll override the response method. And the input to the response method will be something like that. And your toughest job is going to be to parse that command, break it up into tokens. And for that, you know, I would suggest there's a, in the string class, there's a method called split. We'll take a string and it'll split it up into an array of, of substrings, right? And then these numbers here are gonna be strings. You're gonna have to convert them to doubles. Okay, and uh, then you'll have a big if else, if else, just like we had in Casino, if the operators add, do this, else if the operators mull, do this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, if you throw an exception, that exception, what's this over here? Did somebody just draw a green line on that? I'm paranoid, maybe, maybe we're gonna be bombed here in a minute. Uh, if, uh, and now it's gone, All right, getting nervous. Um, if you throw an exception, the request handler I gave you terminates, right? So you might, you have my permission to make those changes I suggest earlier to only terminate if you're in debug mode or something like that. Okay, so you should, this is easy to do. As you saw, it's really easy to customize Echo. So, you know, what I would like to see, and maybe this is a bit ambitious, I have an office hour tomorrow at 10.30. I'd love to see people coming in with questions about, you know, their math handler, their, their, uh, their, their Echo framework. In other words, you know, I'd like it if you took a real stab at getting lab one and two done by, uh, you know, by 1030 uh, tomorrow, if you could, that would be a good, be a good little goal, I think. Questions? No. All right. Take a moment. So, new topic, proxies, okay, so uh, proxy is a special kind of request handler, so we've seen, we have math handler, we have casino handler, okay, and now we're going to have proxy handler, proxy handler is a request handler, the feature of a proxy handler is that he has a peer, which is a correspondence. Let's see if this question is coming in. Somehow my chat window seems to have disappeared on me. Hang on a second. I feel like something weird is it. How many numbers are we allowed to enter in? Well, it's any number greater than or equal to two. I don't think we need to restrict that, but it'll be a finite number. You're not allowed to input an infinite number of numbers, which would be hard to do. Okay, so, um, so proxy handler, subclass request handler, no big deal there. And he has this pointer to another correspondent that he refers to as his pair. It's a protected pointer to his pair. Okay, and what the proxy handler does, remember he has to have this response method. So he gets a request from a client, 
And he then forwards that request to its peer, to his peer. And then the peer is going to eventually send a response back, which response here just returns to the client. So all the proxy handler does is he just forwards stuff. He forwards to the peer, he forwards the peer's response back to the client. And uh, that may sound kind of weird uh, to just do that, but it gives us the ability to form chains of servers like this. So here uh, we have P1, which is a proxy, okay? and uh, P1 is a proxy handler. So this is a server, and his peer is P2. P2's peer is P3. P3's peer is the math handler. Okay. All one, two, three, four, five, all five of these objects are running in separate processes. If they're on your machine, like to test this, they would all be running in different command windows. You'd have five command windows going on. Okay, but of course, they could also be running if you had like a you have like a little network or you've got like you know some some actual IP addresses that you own. You know, these things could be running on different computers on the internet or different computers on a local area network. Okay. And so here comes the command add two, three, four. Okay, this forwards the command, P1 forwards it to P2, P2 forwards it to P3, P3 forwards it to the math handler. Here comes the response back, which is, is very embarrassing. So two plus three plus four is not eight. So I'll fix that one of these days. So that should be nine, right? Um, and so here you see that P3 is forwarding the response to P2, forwarding it to P1, forwarding it back to the client. Why do this? It seems kind of pointless. Well, uh, what we're going to see shortly is that it's possible to subclass these proxy handlers so that you see this little space here. In this little space, some pre-processing of this request could happen. Okay, and the same here, the same here. And then you see this little space here, some post-processing of the result could happen here as well. So this gives you a way of adding features to the math handler that aren't inside the math handler itself. We'll see some examples of that in a minute. I mean, for example, uh, math handler only does basic arithmetic. P3 might add to that trigonometry, sine, cosine, tangent, that sort of thing. So if it's a sine, cosine, or tangent, rather than forward it to this guy, I'll handle it here myself. Right? Now, the original math handler didn't do trig, but now it seems to the client like, wow, this math handler is pretty cool, right? It does arithmetic and it does trig functions. Here are some examples of proxy handlers. Firewall cache proxy. Firewall proxy okay, would be something, so you could have all three of these, right? P1 could be your firewall proxy. Typical, an example of a firewall proxy, right? You've got like a company, people are in cubicles, they're supposed to be working, but uh, some of them are in their cubicles and they're like, you know, out on the internet downloading, you know, Dilbert cartoons or something like that, where your firewall proxy could filter out requests for illegal sites, right? So when I ask for the, uh, the uh, or unauthorized sites, so when I ask for like a Dilbert cartoon, Instead of forwarding the request, it sends back like an angry message, you know, get to work, you lazy bum. Uh, if it is a legitimate request, it would forward it on to maybe a cash proxy. The cash proxy says, wait a minute, you just made this request 10 minutes ago. I have the answer here in my cache, and I'm just gonna send the answer back to you rather than disturb the next guy. If it didn't have the answer in the cache, it might send it on to a security proxy. 
the security proxy says, well, wait a minute, this particular server requires like a, a username and a password. What's your username? What's your password? And so those are examples of like kind of enhancing, you know, the basic uh, math, enhance, enhance our basic uh, math, um, math handler. Okay, and you're gonna implement these things as part two of the assignment. Right. So, as it turns out, these pipelines like this, this is a design pattern. Okay, this design pattern we're seeing is called the decorator pattern. Okay, the idea of the decorator pattern is you have some basic kind of object like our little map handler here. And what you would like to do is enhance that object but the problem is that you're not allowed to alter the object at all. How can you enhance something without altering it? When you put these proxies in front of it in the decorator pattern, these are called decorators that go in front of it. Okay, uh, here's another example of uh, the decorator pattern. So this is code from Simple Client. You look in Simple Client and find this thing. So in simple client, I have this standard output okay, that you're going to write to. And look at the way, what, way I created uh, STD out. I started with system.out. This is system.out that print line. System.out is very crude, and you can only uh, write one character at a time. Uh, output stream writer wraps around it. Output stream writer is a decorator, Java terminology they call it filter, but it's a decorator, okay? It enhances system.out by uh, allowing sequences of characters to be written to it. And so it basically just takes a, a string and busts it up into one character at a time. A buffered writer is a decorator for that. And what it does is it buffers all of the characters you want to write until you know you have like enough that it's efficient, we'll just do it all at once. Right? You know, actually writing the system dot out is a little bit inefficient. So, you know, it's better to buffer everything that you want. And then print writer is a decorator for that, which you know also has um, things for doing. For example, uh, uh, writing numbers like floats, integers, and booleans. It will convert those things to strings for you before they get written, right? So, so you know, it, this guy here is analogous to math handler, right? And then this guy would be analogous to P3, P2, P1. So it's the same sort of thing, except here we have system.out, and then these are all of these decorators in front of it. Now, there is a way to think about this that might be helpful to you, although it's kind of gross. Um, in software engineering, we sometimes, um, we sometimes uh, compare decorator pattern with the strategy pattern. Okay? And we say that the strategy pattern allows you to change the a strategy pattern, changes the guts of an object, while decorator pattern changes the skin of an object. Okay, let's think about strategy pattern. For example, in strategy pattern, you had like a prisoner, okay, and the prisoner had some sort of a, uh, a cooperation strategy. Always cooperate, always cheat, reciprocate, and kind of things like that. Random. Okay, so uh, what is possible to do is for a given prisoner, you could change his strategy. So you go inside of the prisoner and change his strategy pointer to point to a different strategy. Okay, so. So we saw that also we had like a, another example, we had like a gladiator with a weapon. 
And that weapon was his strategy that affected his behavior for how he, how he, how he attacked other gladiators. And we could go inside of the gladiator and take away his sword and give him like a magic wand instead. And that changed his behavior. So in all of those cases, we have to go inside the object and change the strategy. So the person who designed prisoner, the person who designed gladiator, they had to leave that little door open for people to change the guts of their object. It's kind of like, you know, if you have lots of operations, maybe the doctor would just say, hey, you know, I'm just gonna like put a zipper in here so we don't have to cut you open each time. Right, so somebody has to create some kind of an easy access door um, for you to, you know, change strategy. So that you know, that's why we say changing the guts. Now here in this example, you're looking at uh, no such strategy pattern was used with Math Handler, right? Uh, so you know, Math Handler was not designed for you to be able to make changes to its guts but you'd like to enhance it with firewalls and, and security and, and you know, cash you know, abilities, all of this kind of stuff. Okay, so what we do is uh, we put these proxies or handlers in front of it. Here's a way to think about it. Um, think, about, think about this as a kind of an onion. Math handler is the center of the onion. And then wrapped around that is a sort of an inner layer of skin, which is P3. Wrapped around that is P2, and wrapped around that is P1. Okay, so Math Handler is at the center. It's got all of these strings around it, right? Uh, um, and so then here comes a message, this little arrow coming in. Think of it like a real arrow. It has to pierce each one of these layers of skin before getting to the core. When the core sends an arrow out, it has to pierce all through the layers of skin coming out. And each time an arrow pierces one of these skins, uh, some sort of processing can happen uh, in that time or not. Right? It's totally optional. Okay, so we're adding layers of skin to you know, enhance the behavior of some, some unchangeable object. So changing the skin versus changing the guts, decorator versus strategy. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? Well, uh, we're gonna, um, we'd like to, you know, I think lab three, maybe, I can't remember, uh, is gonna ask you to create this proxy handler. Okay, and you're gonna approach it, starting out approaching it, just the way that we uh, approached, uh, you know, the casino handler. So proxy handler extends request handler, okay? But uh, here is the problem. Um, so this proxy handler has a peer from the diagram, we saw that, of type correspondent. Remember what a correspondent is? Correspondent is just an object that has a socket. Okay, that he and he has send and receive methods. Okay, so he's got some kind of a pointer to appear here. Okay, and uh, what I've got to do is I've got to somehow initialize that peer. So I've given this, I'm going to add an init peer method, and this is the host where the peer is running, the host machine that's running the peer, call it local host. And here is the port where uh, the peer is listening in on, the peer server is listening in on. Okay, and so here the peer will be a new correspondent, and uh, here is that correspondent peer is going to request a connection to this host at that port. But uh, who's going to call a NIT peer? Where do we call a NIT peer? This is a proxy handler, right? Um, well, this is going to have to be done by the server. And unfortunately, our server doesn't do this. So uh, what we're going to have to do is this, we're going to have to create a new kind of server called a proxy server. It extends server. 
but this proxy server is one that you know is going to connect to a peer. So here we're going to add fields peer host and peer port. Okay. And we're going to override make handler and we're going to have we're going to have a different name. Okay, and here's how um, this is how um, here, for example, this might be code that's inside make handler it might look like this. And I call super make handler, give it S as a socket. Okay, so that is going to give me some kind of a request handler. Okay, I assume that handler is a proxy handler, so I cast it. And here I call a knit peer, and I give it peer host and peer port. And then uh, let's look at the code that I've given you. Um, so here's like a little, uh, let's refresh this made some changes to it. Here's a little refresh of it. Here's a little sample of it. Proxy server extends server. Okay, here's the uh, peer host and peer port. That's the guy that this proxy is connected to, is gonna connect to. And here I'm initializing all of that. So a lot of inputs to the constructor here. My port, and this is the service that I'm running. And then here is the peer port and the peer host. And then make handler. So I've shown you the code for this. You're going to make a proxy handler and then call its init peer method. And then main here. Uh, so here, if you don't specify anything, if there are no command line arguments, I am my service. I'm going to be providing service at 5555. Five, five. I'm going to assume that the peer port is 6666. The peer host, I'm going to assume, is localhost. Okay. And the service that I'm going to offer is just the proxy handler service, just the forwarding service. Here's proxy handler, it extends request handler. And here's the init peer that we just saw. And then here is response. So you've got this message came from your client or might have come from somebody who thinks you're the peer. Uh, and you're going to forward that message to your peer. And then that's a typo, I should say return. You're going to return the peer's response. Okay. And then we'll talk about this on Tuesday, but you know we're going to do a cache handler, which is going to cache its uh, results, uh, and uh, then we're going to do a security proxy, which is going to have a user password table, and so it'll prompt you for like a it'll prompt you your very first request. It's going to prompt you for a username and a password, and then check to see if you're legitimate or not. Okay. Lab six, um, exchanging objects, so this is not required. I'll say a few words about it next week sometime. And then sort of our last topic here is remote method invocation. Okay, how are we doing? Questions? No? Okay. So, um, so I think that's enough for today. Um, I'm having an office hour tomorrow at 1030. It would be great if some of you, you know, made some progress on this by then. And, uh, and then otherwise, you'll have a great weekend, I'm sure, I hope. And, um, and yesterday, in fact, for me, I went on a little hike uh, yesterday. And I think that was the first time I've been out of my house in, I don't know, gosh, maybe three weeks, something like that. You know, I am turning into a mushroom here. And the bad part about turning into a mushroom is that I kind of like it. You know, I'm thinking, oh, gee, you know, maybe after this virus has gone away, I'll just like remain being a mushroom for the rest of my life. 
So that's my big fear. Anyway, uh, let's not be mushrooms this weekend. You know, let's you know try to at least let the sun touch our touch our faces. And I will see you on Tuesday.